Hey everybody, and welcome to Sunday School, June the 20th. Uh, my name is Jared. I haven't done this. Uh, this is my first week uh, recording the Sunday School lesson, um, so I ask your prayers, patience. Um, just bear with me if you would, please. But we're going to be studying in Acts chapter 18 this morning. Um, what I would like to do uh, first is read the passage. It's uh, 18, Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 17. Uh, just in the event that you're watching this and you don't have a, a Bible immediately accessible to you, um, or you have just haven't brought your Bible. So we're going to go ahead and flip over there. And for those of you who do have your Bible, I'm going to give you just a few moments to find that passage again. It's Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 17. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord, together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal, saying, This man is persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or vicious crime, O Jews, I would have reason to accept your complaint. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and your own law, see to it yourselves. I refuse to be a judge of these things. And he drove them from the tribunal, and they all seized Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of this. I'm just going to take a few moments to pray here. So if you would bow your heads for just a few moments. Thank you, Almighty and Always God, for another beautiful opportunity to meet you in your Holy Scripture. And in this particular passage, and we would ask that you reveal to us the lessons, the truths that you have prepared for us this morning. And we ask that you give us receptive hearts, receptive minds, and receptive spirits. That we would imbibe every word, every syllable of your gospel this morning and the love that you share with us through your holy word. We love this time with you, this precious, beloved time. And we ask that you would continue to convict us, strengthen us, encourage us to be the Christians you would have us be, that we would walk more closely with you each and every day, that we would draw nearer to you, 
each day, each moment of our lives. And we ask you for the peace as we go forward, and the understanding and the wisdom that we know you are able and do impart through your word. And we just ask that you teach us to be the Christians that you would have us be, the missionaries, the evangelists for you, and that when we take your lessons, your word, your love, when we go out into the world to share it with those around us, we pray that we do it with willing, joyful hearts. And then we do it for the upbuilding of your kingdom to glorify your holy and blessed Son. And we ask all these things in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. First, I'd like to comment on how apropos I think it is that we're studying Paul and his ministry as our church is about to embark on our Alaska mission trip. Uh, to be called to the mission field is a great undertaking, uh, whether it's as a full-time, long-term missionary, or if you're participating in a singular mission trip. Um, it's not something as Christians that we should take lightly, and certainly shouldn't be a decision made without considerable prayer and consultation with God Almighty. As it pertains to this scripture that we're studying today, I want you to consider here Paul's calling. Not only did God commission Paul to disseminate the word throughout a vast Roman Empire, and really even beyond that, but in this particular passage, we're seeing the Jews again repudiate the name and the truth of Christ. So, Paul symbolically washes his hands of accountability for the Jews' salvation. He even declares in verse 6, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. This is going to be our focal point for this particular Bible study. And not to say that the rest of the scripture isn't uh, important or is any less important. Um, this is just what captivated me this morning. And uh, as I was preparing through the week for this, and I want to stick here if we will. I want you to take a few moments to imagine the resolution it required of Paul to be that bold and steadfast in your, in his rather spiritual office. Um, he is, he's not turning his back on the Jews, but you think about the Jews are God's chosen people. And just like they did when Christ was with them, they're reviling him. And reviling Christ through Paul, through Paul's ministry. I want you to think about that. Think about similar moments that you've had as a Christian, witness, witnessing to others. affecting an office that you felt sincerely called by God to do and they don't want to hear it. Paul could have simply retreated. He could have walked away from his responsibility in delivering the gospel but he remained fervent. I want you to notice also that I said he could have simply retreated and not easily. 
There wasn't anything easy about what Paul was striving to accomplish. And God certainly wouldn't have allowed Paul to easily walk away from his ministry. We all remember Jonah. And now take a few more moments to consider the ramifications of the Jews' callous hearts. With that in mind, can you remember life before you were converted to the faith, before you were inundated with Christ's love, before you understood the peace and comfort that comes with belonging to Jesus? We were once lost and misguided, just like the Jews in this passage. Now, I'll offer this disclaimer here. Not only were the Jews rejecting Paul's message about Jesus as the Messiah, Gentiles did too. It's not as though Paul stopped ministering to the Jews and all of a sudden he was wildly successful preaching, teaching, ministering, evangelizing to the Gentiles. No, he still faced similar tribulations and turbulence in all the various regions he, he visited in which he was a missionary for God. And it's no different today. We see conversions across the spectrum in our contemporary world. And sadly, we see people pass on from this life every day that didn't know Jesus. They're strangers, they're co-workers, they're friends, they're family members. And I don't say that to be discouraging. I realize how discouraging this is just as much as you do, just as Paul did nearly 2,000 years ago. There are times it can feel defeating. Thankfully, we can praise God that you and I are children of a most gracious, merciful, compassionate Lord. And because we belong to Christ, he will continue to encourage and strengthen all of us in our faith, in our trust, and in our hope. He will be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path as long as we receive and rely on him. And most importantly, God will provide us with the opportunities and resources to be fishers of men, just like he did Paul. And when one person or one group of people decide not to listen, he'll open other doors and we'll be called to a different ministry, but with the same ultimate purpose in mind. Remember this, none of us are born in this life with the seal of salvation already imprinted. It demands a courageous decision to step out in faith and accept that endless immutable love demands even more courage to stay the course because just as we're learning today with Paul, with this scripture, one thing we can guarantee is tribulation throughout our respective journeys. There's no way around that. It's inescapable. But we all know and can take solace in the providence that our creator, our protector, our redeemer freely gives us daily. Finally, to our Alaska mission team, we exhort you to diligence and courage in proclaiming the love of Christ to those that will hear. We pray to God for your perseverance in preaching God's holy word with love, joy, and compassion.